good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the fifth session of our International Week. My name is Riyad, and I am an accounting lecturer at the Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Gajah Mada, and I will be serving as your moderator today. Uh, you will be hearing a lecture from Dr. Henry Sabarini on this very timely subject. But before we get started, I want to take a few minutes of your time to explain briefly about the profile from the speakers. So uh, we have a Dr. Uh, Henry Sabarini. Uh, Dr. Henry Sabarini is a prominent Indonesian economist. She is a founder of Core Indonesia or Center of Reform on Economics. She obtained her PhD in 2004 in political economy with specialization at industrial economics from the University of Tsukuba, Japan. Now she's serving as steering committee at Indonesia FinTech Society with many other important roles and positions. Now, uh, moving along to our sessions, please welcome uh, Dr. Henry Sabrini, who will be speaking to us on the topic of business digitalizations in post-COVID era, the role of FinTechs. Um, Dr. Henry, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pa Riyad. So I will make a preparation first with my presentation materials. So good day, everyone. This is my pleasure to be here to make a sharing with all of you. And today I will make a presentation, maybe just uh, 30 or 40 minutes, Pa Riyad. And then I need your help to prepare uh, nine pieces of paper and then you put the number one to nine and then we make we will make a discussion and then all the participants is going to make a presentation. So okay? we already have a group, so uh, okay. they already have a group, nine groups, so they are ready to work in, in, in their own groups. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, the topic for today's discussion is quite interesting, but uh, it's also not easy. So I want to introduce a little bit about myself, uh, about IPSOC especially, because IPSOC is like a society, the member is uh, the stakeholder, there is a player, a regulator, and then media, expert, and also the economist. So I'm the economist. So today, I am not rep representing IFSOC as a player. So I'm not deal with uh, a, a deep, uh, what is this, business in fintech. But uh, I will talking about uh, fintech in the microeconomic point of view. Okay. Uh, the first thing is this. If we talk about uh, digitalization. So then the recovery after the pandemic COVID, uh, there is a significant impact. We all are know. There are two things. First is acceleration of digitalization. And then second is transformation of work. Yeah, uh, we know uh, since 2020, uh, 20, uh, 20 and 20, uh, the world facing COVID-19, and also everybody have to stop. We have to stop the economic activity and also the mobility. So that's why it's not easy for us to recover. Then, this is the first question for all of you. Please raise hand. Uh, recovery of pandemic COVID economic crisis is different from other economic crisis. Is there anybody have opinion on this? Paria, is there is Somebody is raise hand. No. Okay. Uh, please raise your hands, participants, if you have any idea or opinions about the topics. Oh uh, yes, one from a uh, John, John Riango from Please John. Yeah. Okay. In my view, I can say mm -hmm. that the recovery from COVID is different. Consider that this was a risk factor that was never considered possible by, by, by almost everyone in the world before it came. And as a consequence, we tried to come up with various policy decisions, which were more driven, which were more driven rather by emotion 
done instead by logic. And therefore, I believe it will take a period of time in order for us to come into a logical position on how we can recover from this tragedy. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm so sorry. I only picked on one name because of right. the time limitation. So okay. uh, there is a, a reason why it's different. Because in other economic crises, uh, only certain country that uh, facing the crisis, but the, the pandemic, COVID-19 crisis, all country facing this crisis. And then we have to stop the economy. The other crisis, some still can do economic activity, but at this time, nobody can do this. And then next is, uh, we don't know when it's going to be finished. And then that's why we have need a solution with the new environment. So there is no room for us to back to the previous condition. So that's the, 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 the difference be, between the economic crisis uh, caused by uh, COVID-19 and also other uh, factor. So it's not easy for us to facing this crisis. Okay, so then next. Next, we are uh, talking about the business digitalization. Uh, when we talk about the digitalization, um, maybe there is three things that we need also to, to take into account. One is the digitization. Number two is digitalization. And then the last one is, is the more complicated and more complete is digital transformation. So, the digitization is very easy. It's, it look like just from analog to digital. Like uh, we uh, remove all the paper, everything's ha have to be digitalized. And then for digitalization, there is some process that we have to change to increase the efficiency and also the productivity, the effectiveness. But for the digital transformation is different because it look like the whole business process we have to rearrange, yeah. Uh, we, uh, there is, uh, we have to collect the data and then analyze, and then we have to uh, have a new strategy and uh, come to the new solution with the new environment. So this is why this is not easy. And there is no room for us to, to return back. As a conclusion, maybe we can say that business digitalization is the process of integrating technology that change the way organization operate. So it means that, that not just digitization of the business. This is the first, the second uh, one. So uh, what should we do with this? <laughs> because uh, uh, with the business digitalization, including small and uh, big industry. So we hope that large and large and SMEs can have an equal opportunity to market their product along with other big players. So uh, both the large and the SMEs, they have to come to the solution, the new solution with the uh, environment that they are facing. Okay. Next is the fintech development. Yeah. Uh, if we talk about the, the fintech, so there is an evolution because uh, before maybe somebody don't know that the fintech is starting in long, long time ago, maybe in the 18th century. Yeah. Uh, at that time, some uh, uh, financial services in developed countries they introducing a uh, digital bank or uh, ATM maybe in 1980s in Indonesia and then digital bank in uh, developed countries in 1967. So this is the evolution. And now we come to the, the FinTech 3.0. Somebody said this is FinTech 3.0. So FinTech is defined as innovation. Yeah, that involves the ever-expanding integration between digital technology and finance. 
So such integration commonly seeks to enhance the automate, the use and delivery of financial services to consumer and businesses. Okay, so what kind of uh, fintechs and also the ecosystem? The one that we all know is payment. So we call it the paytex. So here, the payment industry will the development and integrate integration of digitized processing application and diverse processing network. Wearable technology and smart devices are being developed for consumer to facilitate better digital connectivity and consumer identity protection. Second, that we also is very quite uh, un, uh, what is this uh, used to this uh, type of fintech is lend tech or lending. This sector use technology to offer lending solution to consumer through more accurate and streamlined process. Smart system using artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm are used to process and verify, identify credential to ensure error-free result. The other is uh, uh, insurance technology. So in this lending technology, then because we have the big data, so we come to the solution for the SMEs who don't have collateral and we cannot uh, assess them because there is no record on business activity. So we then come to alternative credit scoring. So still innovation will come long way. Okay, the next question. Uh, in this ecosystem, why regulatory technology is important in this FinTech? Anybody want to share the opinion? Okay, please participate, raise your hands. <laughs> okay, we have one, uh, Jovan. Oh, please. I think Jovan is your hand. Oh, yes, ma'am. I think. All right. Uh, I think in terms of mm -hmm. digitalization, in terms of the fintech regulation, mm -hmm. is very important because fintech is basically like our traditional payment, like the old traditional banking system, and etc. Mm -hmm. etc. And mm -hmm. If there are no regulation, we basically have so many things that not are taking into account. Like for example, like credit risk, something like that. Many of the risks that involve in the digit, the in the technology that involve in the financial world, ma'am. For example, like there are many things. For example, fraud, mm -hmm. and for example, like that. Yeah, I think that's my opinion, ma'am. That is why fintech needs a regulation because it is basically the same as our old traditional but the difference yes. is we are using technology instead of the old ways of using the more traditional way and yes thank okay you. thank you jovan so when the other services is developed very fast and then the regulation is not the same path so it will be a problem like what you say so as a subset of the fintech that focus on technology that may facilitate the delivery of regulatory requirement more efficiently and effectively than existing capabilities. So uh, like what you say, Jovan, so it's, we need also the regulatory technology. Otherwise, it, it will be no, it will be a mismatching between the business and also the supporting for that. Next is about the fintech itself. We know that fintech is in the very uh, regulated industry. Yeah, it will be problem if the government implementing regulation based on uh, what 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 we said uh, current. Uh, practice in uh, financial. So what we need is that uh, one of the key advantage of the, the fintech sector is that 
should be almost free from the tight regulation that affect traditional financial institution. Yeah. But in Indonesia, even uh, right now, the uh, cryptocurrency, we don't know how to regulate. And there is no uh, government who regulate that. So uh, if we have the very slow adoption in uh, uh, policy and strategy, it will be uh, difficult for fintech to develop uh, like happened in other uh, developed country. That's one that I said, this is the soft infrastructure. So soft infrastructure is very important. The second requirement is hard infrastructure. What is the hard infrastructure for Indonesia? If you see this uh, graph, we, we know that for Indonesia, it's quite, what we said, it's quite ready because the coverage of the internet right now is already 98% of villages in Indonesia covered by uh, 4G. So we be quite ready to come to the digital era. But then the problem is we are the archipelago country. So it's not easy to connect it. Second is we talk about the quality of the connection. And then also there are many blank spots. The next is also the price. But in terms of the readiness, we quite ready for the uh, infrastructure. So based on this, so if we talk about the penetration, internet penetration in Indonesia, in 2022, it's already 77%. So 77% of Indonesian population already using the internet. Uh, if we compare with India, India right now is 47%. And then China is 70%. So we quite optimist to adopt the, the digitalization in, in uh, Indonesia. And if you see the, the information, the other information that the level of penetration is not depend on uh, the level of economy, the level of education, and also uh, the region. So even though this is in far from Jakarta, the internet penetration is quite uh, high. So uh, this is the next. Okay, but in Indonesia, what we use uh, the, the, the connectivity for the internet. Mostly is for the social media. We know that. Yeah. Uh, the, the most important for the Indonesian people is checking the social media, media every day. But beside that, 84% of internet users use media, social media for trading activities, not just for the, what is this? as a hater <laughs> or talking about the something nonsense. No, this is also for business. And 82% of SMEs use this internet for promotion activities. 62% of SMEs using the social media for the promotion. So this is the environment of the readiness of us. Okay, let's we come to the impact of the uh, pandemic COVID. So what is the important one? First important is that very limited company, SMEs, who close their business. So it means that SMEs is very agile and they are very flexible to change their business and then they still uh, stay during the pandemic. And certain SMEs sector that they are uh, affected negatively from uh, uh, COVID-19. But SMEs, which is dominated in our GDP is more than 60%, they are the backbone of our economy during the, uh, the pandemic. Okay, so do they are going to continue using the digital because they are digitalized? during the pandemic. 
And then how about the, during the recovery? Are they going to reduce? No. Why? Because 80, 86% are already depending on internet. It's look like their activities cannot do without internet. And then uh, if we took, what is the, the reason for them to continue in using the digital? Because make easy in daily activity. So if we talk about the adoption of digi digital in the community, the population in Indonesia, I think it's quite, quite okay. Then let's we talk uh, several uh, products or services on fintech. The first one is uh, e-commerce. We know that uh, e-commerce, uh, we have a very high uh, growth for the value of e-commerce transaction. And then also, if we look at the data for the e-money transaction and also uh, the value in the uh, in the first quarter, this is also uh, growing, growing uh, quite fast. Yeah, uh, I think there there are some also uh, government policy who support this uh, condition. Uh, for example, for the government policy, uh, social safety net or cash transfer they transform from cash to using the digital. So there is no more cash that the people uh, uh, receive in, in their villages. And also they put some policy, the government, to maintain uh, the, the government revenue. What they do, the people right now, they can pay PPGS, this is the health insurance, and also uh, pay BB. Yes, the, the housing and land uh, uh, tax, and then also uh, the, the BPJS uh, through this platform and also no more using the, the, the cash. Uh, that, that's why many uh, government policies support the, the development of fintech and also maintaining Indonesian economy during the, the pandemic is not dropped too uh, deep or too low, yeah? Okay, if you look at this, the e-commerce create job. We are worried that uh, after we come to the digital era, then many people are high, uh, 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 fire, yeah? Uh, but the new job, the new business, they create also uh, many jobs with the new qualification. So this is the, the part of the important of the fintech to solve the unemployment problem in Indonesia. This is uh, uh, one thing. Next. It's about the payment. Yeah. Uh, Central Bank, they introduce QRES or QRIS, Quick Response Indonesian uh, Standard. If we look at this, the, the data, even the micro, micro finance, micro enterprises, they easily adopt it. I joined the central bank in some uh, city uh, to do the socialization of this. The people is just adopting very easily. So if you, you right now, if you go to the traditional market, you can pay with the, the, the curious and easy to, uh, to register for this. Next is the lending. Uh, fintechs help our economy to increase the financial inclusion. If you look at the data, the loan distribution by P2P lending, uh, the growth is so, so high. And then if we compare with the distribution to bank, it's 
almost stagnant. Yeah. So if before uh, the pandemic, seventy percent of SMEs they cannot access the financial services. Some is unbank, some is uh, under bank, and some is not uh, uh, have com uh, complete the requirement. And in 2022, it's already 76, so opposite the financial inclusion. They are not getting the financial services from bank, but from fintech. So uh, they are also a homework for us to register this for, for this. So it means that in 2024, I think the target for Indonesia to become 90% for financial inclusion, we can achieve that. Okay, so then what is the homework? Yeah, When we talk about the financial inclusion, so we also need to talk about the uh, financial literacy because if the people have no uh, quite good uh, financial literacy, then they will uh, get the lending with no uh, preparation or uh, with risky. Second is about the consumer data protection. Yeah. Other country, they already have the regulation the uh, for the data protection, but Indonesia, we still discussing about this. Hopefully, that this year or next year, uh, the government and the parliament will agree with the new uh, regulation. Uh, so uh, it will be uh, reducing the risk in implementing the business digital. Next is cyber security. And then this is, of course, the human resources. Yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, this is our homework. Yeah. This is our homework. Why? Because the most needed new job is look like uh, mostly heavily uh, need the digital skill. But if you look at the, the data right now, for example, here, the percentage of workforce applying digital skill in overall, it's not the it's not the, the advanced one. Indonesia is only 90% of the workforce. They know about or they they they, they understand and have the skill in, in, in digital. And if we combine digital skill index, Indonesia is maximum is 20%. Close to uh, Indonesia is India. Even Indonesia is uh, only more or less is ten percent in all categories of the workforce uh, scale, but the number of population is huge. So uh, right now is one point four, yeah, billion. So it means it's huge people. They already have and apply uh, the competency of uh, digital skill. So that's why the adoption of digitalization in uh, India and China, this is the highest in the world. Yeah. Uh, maybe other country like uh, in Japan, they are so, uh, what is this, uh, need process uh, and also uh, very uh, bureaucratized. So not easy to implement the digitalization, but like in in uh, India or in Indonesia, you know, the regulation is not ready, but the development of fintech is uh, so many things. We, we have like uh, not only payment, but also the lending and also insurance and so forth. Okay. Faria? Yes, group. we are ready yeah. uh, for the group discussions. Okay, yes. I think I finished uh, my presentation as for the 
uh, to make a discussion between us. Yeah. So I have some question. Number one that you have to to solve or make an, your opinion. Number one is how may Indonesia be able to grab the opportunities in this digital era, considering the domination of micro business and low scale workforce? Number two, how fintech could become a bridge to financial and economic inclusion? And then the third one is how did COVID pandemic give a positive impact on economy sector digitalization? So you can pick just three sector. Pa Riyad? Yes. Yes, I would like to, to get the A, B, C. A is for group number one, hmm. number four, and then number seven. Okay. And then question for B is for the group number two, number five, and then number eight. And then the rest is for question number C. So I already have my presentation in 30 minutes. <laughs> and then, then right. what is the process for the next session? Uh, we already prepared a breakout room. So okay. the participants will join to their respective groups uh, based mm -hmm. on the topics. Maybe it's better for you to repeat again the topics and the groups. Or I could write it down in the chat rooms. So question A is for? Yes. Question A is for group number one. Okay. One and then, and then yes. One and then four. Four. And then six. Six. Okay. Right. I think it's six. six. Yeah. Okay. All right. And one, two, question. three is A, B, C. And then four, five, six is again A, B, C. And seven, eight, and nine is this also A, B, C. This is what I mean. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So any question before we make a discussion? Are you preparing for the presentation? Please continue, Paria. Okay, uh, please, uh, each group, join uh, to the breakout rooms with all the respected members. Well, you will have uh, 15 minutes to have a discussion, and then we'll come back uh, to the main rooms to hear uh, your idea about the topics. Okay, I think uh, the time is up. So uh, shall we begin the presentations? All right, so we got all the participants here in the main rooms. So, uh, to Henry, shall we begin with the group one or shall we begin with the topic A? Which one is better? Uh, yes. Uh, because each group uh, will have five minutes, so I will invite and I will choose the group. All right. Number one is please group number three. Group number three is question C. Yeah, question three. Correct. So everybody have to be ready. It's a part of the number three. Okay. So now we have, because uh, we have to choose three sectors, right? So the first mm -hmm. sector is like the uh, social media. Yeah, because uh, be because of the pandemic, so we have to contain the spread of the pandemic. So the uh, people will start stay longer at their home. So they will have have more entertainment to demand. So they will use the uh, social media more. Uh, also, we, we, we found the uh, evidence of it. It's like uh, from 2017, the downloads of the TikTok is from uh, 68 million, right? Okay, to the 2020, uh, yeah, in 2020, the downloads of the TikTok is like uh, 1,050, 500. Yeah, so you can say there is a big surge of the 
uh, downloads, right? And yeah, the second part is like the esports game. Uh, like in China, the e esports game really just like boosts a lot. Uh, before the pandemic, maybe not not so many people have pay attention to this industry, but because of pandemic, people are staying longer in their home. They have nothing to do. Some people they are just like uh lose their job, they are on employment, so they just uh randomly touch something in the internet. So the there is a big surge of the esports. Uh third part of it is like the food and beverage. In the food and beverage industry, there's a lot of uh, improvements in the industry itself, like the food delivery service such as GoFood, GrabFood, or ShopFood, which are all um, available by everyone and everyone uses it in the in the COVID uh, pandemic era. The next is uh, Curious, which is uh, the uh, simple paying payment system, uh, which is easier payment for merchant in having transaction between the customers and the merchants itself. The next is efficiency in business resources due to less workforce. They are using technology to cope with the new times, using marketing technology and etc. And then also having online only food services, uh, and then inventory management and also online marketing. The next is also new sectors uh, in the during the COVID pandemic era, new demand for healthy food and beverages from health conscious people due to the COVID nineteen pandemic. And then there's a uh, food subscription services inside those food delivery services where um, the merchants, the customers, and the platforms uh, benefit all from uh, those subscription services. The next is uh, health. Okay, so maybe from the health, uh, we look at the data. And actually, the revenue in the digital health market is projected to reach uh, about 2.08 billion US dollars in 2022. And the revenue is expected to show an annual growth uh, rate of 15.61% and resulting uh, projected market volume uh, for about 3.71 billion uh, by the 2026. And uh, in Indonesia, the digital fitness and well-being segment covers devices that are uh, specifically intended for fitness and motion tracking uh, and apps, such as fitness apps, nutrition apps, and also meditation apps. And the e-health segment uh, has a more complex structure and is focused on devices, apps uh, that sold via internet and also uh, online doctor consultations, such as uh, Holodoc in this case. And online doctor consultations uh, or teleconsultants uh, focus solely on remote uh, consultations between patients and doctors conducted via online channels, either website or mobile apps. And uh, we'll, we'll like to uh, share a screen in this case. So in this case, for the mechanism uh, of the health industry, they are, they are divided into three uh, for the main cast. So the first one is integration and development uh, of health data system, which uh, includes the first one is national uh, data uh, health data, such as Perlindungi. Second one is health data system integration, uh, which is integration integrate integrations from Perlindungi to uh, vendors and buildings, uh, such as office and schools. Number three is development of big uh, health big data analysis systems, uh, which uh, us usually shows the maps of the uh, mobility of COVID pandemic. And the second one is integration or, and development of healthcare application system. Uh, the biggest one in this case is uh, Halodoc. And number four is integrated health applications. applications. Uh, in this case, the integrated is from the Pedulinungi. So if uh, there is a patients of COVID-19 uh, patients, it can uh, reverse to the Holodoc app to give the free uh, medicine to the uh, customer. Number uh, five is integration of business processes and HR improvement. Uh, number six, health, health application help desk. And the last one is the health technology ecosystem development. Uh, we can see that in Indonesia, it's still a development because uh, we're still trying to expand our telemedicine technology, uh, the IT ecosystem for health and biotechnology and also the integration of health biotechnology research. So I think uh, that is uh, all from Group 3. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then next group with uh, question C. Next is uh, group number nine. Uh, hello, everyone. We are group yes. nine, and we talk about the sector. We have positive impact in COVID-19. And the first uh, sector we choose is uh, the electronic industry because the electronic industry develop 
roughly in the time of COVID-19 because the trending of the working remotely divide a lot of investment in this industry and human need a lot of electronic device to able to certain work or even entertainment. And for example, in Vietnam, in the first uh, nine months of the 2021, the manufacturing index of the electronic industry, manufacturing, computer, electronic product, and uh, component increased by 7.7%. Uh, so I think this uh, really have uh, uh, roughly development in this time. And the second sector, uh, Sarah, can you? Um, okay, so I'm going to explain the second sector, which is digital, digital payment. So in the current situation, uh, COVID-19 pandemic is bringing second thoughts about reaching cash as the cases rise up. And due to this reason, some are wanting to go cashless and have contactless transactions. And the pandemic has bring second thoughts about reaching for cash as number of cases tick up and some are going cashless to have contactless transactions. So COVID-19 brought change in the method of payment from traditional to digital payments. And though people have been facing some issues and might have problem in trusting digital payments, but they still definitely switch uh, to digitalized payments once certain steps are taken. And COVID-19 has definitely made us take a step forward to towards digitalization due to people not wanting to use cash as much in any of the payment methods. And there have been concerns over the transmission of COVID-19 through the exchange of cash. So now people are switching to digital payments. For example, like Indonesia, there's like Shopee, GoPay, Ofo. So people usually just uh, use that to pay for uh, like orders when they order food or they order groceries from like the applications such as Gojek, Grab, and Shopee. They would prefer to use uh, digital payments such as the one that I mentioned before in order to... Uh, reduce the contact with the driver and basically they prefer to go uh, contactless transaction and cashless. Okay, for the last for the last sector, as we know, there are many protocols and social distancing and some lockdowns in several countries that causing transition from online to to online, such as when we are doing learning in school we do learning with zoom or or teams or google meetings or something like that and we go with, with online activities like they they are now hot with gaming online there are so many games online like mobile legend or something else that are, are going viral thank you finish for the yeah we are yeah finished. okay Okay, and the last group with the question, now C question, who is doing uh, question C? Because it should be three group, right? Uh, it's group six, ma'am. Okay, Our please. Group. Uh, I think Farah Lesmana would like to uh -huh. start. Okay, yeah, thank you. okay, so uh, the first sector, I believe I've been mentioned before uh, uh, in the previous group, it is the uh, digital digitalization of the healthcare industry so as you can see in indonesia we have holodoc Lindungi, and all the e-fitness uh apps that you can download on the play store or the app store so it has been uh, rising since the early uh early stage of the pandemic uh irene the next one please Okay, so the second sector is heavy, uh, heavily impacted is the e-commerce, as it has immense growth even during this post-pandemic era. As of this February 2020, the growth has increased by about 12% in comparison to the same period last year. This number is caused by the increasing number of users and transactions, both implemented by the consumers and the seller. And for the last point, Ka Jovan. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. So basically, the last sector for our group is basically the entertainment industry, man. the entertainment. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has basically changed people's lifestyle. For example, this can develop a spur of development in the online entertainment, man, for example, like that. So basically, what we found out from our group that from the Nielsen Media Indonesia, they conduct a survey in Indonesia during a pandemic. They found out that the, the trend of indoor entertainment carry out such as online, it is increased 
about 62% for eh, I'm sorry 57% for watching movie online man so basically it increased by 57% and then online games every day is increased by 62% and listening to audio is increased by 30 for ter- more than 35% so basically with this pandemic the entertainment industry especially in inter- the entertainment industry that focus on the something that we can do using uh, internet is very have a growth of profit man just like the previous group said in the e-sport industry and online games like that so that's it man for our group thank you next is group number one with the a question yeah eight questions hello yes right so um uh, we're from uh, group one and the question was Uh, how may Indonesia be able to grab the opportunities in this digital era, considering the domin- domination of micro business and low skill workforce? So, one of this, uh, I guess, one of the way we talk about uh, as a solution to this uh, problem is uh, first we uh, look into what uh, what the present the present of Indonesia uh, have uh, can, can be used for this SMEs. So. Once the system that we all maybe commonly known as Curious in Indonesia, which is a one-stop for all online payment that is uh, officially uh, officially made by Bank, Indo- uh, Bank Indonesia, and it is well uh, uh, can be trusted and safe. So with this uh, this very efficient system, we can uh, maximize the the use of it by, as we all know that uh, SMEs maybe in the don't have the ability to make you know uh, uh, how they to make a much more complex payment system so they just need to register themselves as a business as a business uh, to the uh, the bank indonesia uh, with uh, bank indonesia uh, application and they'll uh, provide a qr a unique qr code that can be used easily And this payment system, of course, encompasses uh, every other uh, payment system, online payment system, and maybe I call OFO, GoPay, and ShopeePay. And with this, it can help uh, uh, boost Indonesian digital Indonesia digitalization. Okay, so regarding the uh, workforce, the uh, human resource unreadiness towards uh, massive uh, this rapid digital. digitalization process um, one thing that the gov- our government can do is to establish a certain curriculum that uh, prepare the uh, upcoming workforce to work in the digitalization uh, uh, industry the digital industry so uh, we have to set an uh, like a new curriculum that is uh, established uh, especially for the uh, digital skills that it's needed for the uh, work opportunities in the upcoming years. So uh, that's uh, our group's opinion uh, regarding the workforce. But, okay, just add a little bit. Uh, I think just for the implementation of the curriculum, maybe the Department of Trading or MSME in every region can make like a video that can teach the MSME in Indonesia about how to enter the digital world as I think in the future it will help a lot. And another thing that we can do to tackle this problem is to implement a company merger. So the merger type that we propose here is a horizontal merger. It's a merger occurring between companies in the same industry So it is a business consolidation that occurs between firms who operate in the same space, often as competitors offering the same goods or services. So an example is a merge between Coca-Cola and Pepsi beverage division because they are the same in nature. So I guess that SME that have similar operation or similar manufacturing process can merge can have a joint manufacturing plant so that they can produce still produce the same goods but maybe differ a little so yeah that's all thank you
maybe in order to add further opportunities yes. and possibility, it opens the possibility of data analytics since the digital era unleash the power of big data to optimize supply chains and business processes in micro businesses. It collect it can collect customer usage data to understand the key feature use and the key failure models for the future resource uh, research and development resources to develop new and more customized products for customers. And it also may uh, rec uh, record like payment records that uh, that will be beneficial for future purpose. And with the uh, unprecedented access to the operational data, it can create advanced analytics that can play a key role in offering a new insight towards the digitized industry for the micro businesses. That's all for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, group number four. four. It's also e question, yeah? Okay, can you guys see the screen now? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so greetings We're from group four. And we have the same question, which is, how may Indonesia uh, be able to grab the opportunities uh, in this digital era, considering the domination of micro business and as well as uh, low skill workforce, I will explain it. Okay, so the first one is scaling. Uh, so as you can, as you guys already know, the human resources are the most important component in the in the uh, in the digital uh, digitalization process. So to to make sure uh, Indonesia is ready, the government uh, and the other partners should uh, train to labor this. Uh, uh, to upskill the 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 human resource to enable them to possess the the needed skills for for this field. Um. So, other than that, uh, with digitalization uh increasing right now, uh, the government can uh subsidize or help micro businesses to improve their uh research and development since it is also an important important part of the process or like if a business wants to um, have growth or like they want to improve their products uh, research and development uh, would help a lot so i think with the with digitalization um, there could be a better research and development so they can improve their products and as well as increase their sales the next one will be presented by my friend or maybe like or also i could also uh, present it so mm -hmm. uh, with digitalization there could also uh, be an investment in, in it uh, the government uh, should come up with maybe the government should come up with policies that will attract investment in uh, information and technology infrastructure so uh, to ensure balanced growth and development in the sector. For instance, like new fiber optic cables to different regions of Indonesia. Next. Okay, so the next one is adoption. Um, the government should be an active participant in ensuring early adoption of new uh, digital technology, they need to come up with policies that remove bottlenecks and adoption to help. Uh, so this could also help uh, the micro businesses in uh, improving their products or like uh, they could also help with a uh, new business model. Okay, yes. So the next step is to educate. This goes uh, hand in hand with adoption. So uh, I believe that uh, it is necessary to lower the barrier to entry to uh, fintech by educating the people uh, of the benefits and how to actually operate the various fintech apps. As mentioned before by uh, my friends from the other group, there are curious that uh, a system that essentially uh, reduce all the limitations between uh, transfer between banks and uh, other fin fintechs, but not a lot of people actually uh, willing to learn about how to actually uh, utilize that, especially people with uh, little to no understand, understanding about uh, the new digital technologies. 
So I believe this goes hand in hand and the government should uh, educate people more. For conclusion, so digitalization is the key factor in the transformation of MSMEs. MSMEs in Indonesia have so far benefited from digital digitalization ability to give them access to a national and international audience, lower operating costs, and optimize transaction procedure. Cardin Indonesia aspires to collaborate closely with the government to boost digital inclusion and speed up MSME scores in order to promote sustainable development and create Okay, I think that's all from our group. Thank you for the attention. Okay, thank you. And then for the last group for question A. Yeah, um, for group seven, I think uh, Indonesia should train employee on how to use uh, technology in their work to uh, improve skill and apply them to the uh, workplace. And I think uh, government have a role of this. Yeah. And because Indonesia has a, a very low percentage of about uh, digital. Yeah. And government uh, should give an employee to the opportunity to learn about a uh, computer open up a lot of uh, opportunity of them and they should learning uh, from other countries and we have them a lot and I think uh, the role of HR is an important yeah because they should train my team member already discussed. I think uh, there's a need for education from a government regarding the application of a digitalization to micro business owners. And uh, Indonesia should, uh, government should train employees on how to use technology in their work uh, to improve their skills and apply them in the workplace. Yeah, that's it. Any addition from this group? Uh, no, that's all. That's all, okay. Okay, then the last question. We start with group five, I think. With B, question B. Okay, so I'm from group, group five. So mm -hmm. the question was how FinTech could become a bridge to financial and economic inclusion. So mm -hmm. First, I'm going to give an introduction of so fintech blockchain based technology, artificial intelligence advancements, and, uh, and other fast evolving breakthroughs can, uh, can assist improve financial efficiency while boosting financial inclusion. In the field of financial inclusion, technology aids in the ex expansion of access to financial services. The growth of mobile phone has made banking system more accessible to low income people. Fintech has promoted the development of alternative collaterals for people who do not have access to traditional financial ins institutions. Technologies that aid in bridging financial inclusion gaps can boost can boost effort to achieve long-term growth. For example, it can open the way for the assessment and monitoring of key performance metrics for green funding initiatives. Next, Kavi. Okay, so I will continue the collaboration. So we will move on to the access and efficiency in transactions for bro for a broader scope in the implementation on a national level. So <clears throat> first one is in the context of access to small loans for as uh, personal use specifically, individuals who are in need for some quick cash can access quick funding just from taking a selfie with their ideas verification, as you can all Already know the amount taken by fintech low knees are often in small amounts, and access to small amounts it may not be up to criteria if uh, one would take it from a bank. And for those in the middle to lower income class people, taking a loan out of a commercial bank or a rural bank may be a bit daunting. The next one will be elaborated by Omara. 
Yes, thank you. And then uh, specifically in the business sector of banking industry, FinTech has provided mm -hmm. an ease of access to any kind of transaction. Uh, for example, take a look at GoPay. People save their money uh, in, the, uh, in GoPay, not because of anything else, but because it will be easier for them to pay for food, rats, electricity, and et cetera. Uh, this then becomes an attraction for customers to want to save their money in a small number with a low interest rate instead of uh, saving it in a uh, form of deposit, which then will be beneficial for the bank itself. Uh, next will be explained by uh, my colleague. Yes, the next one is safety factor. FinTech is a security that can make your transaction more safe and more carry. By every time that you make a transaction, FinTech will have the evidence to show up on the blockchain and it's impossible to edit it. Next guy, please. Then uh, there is a comparison, of course, between the prior and after the years of implementation. For example, before the emergence of e-wallet, people relied on physical money to do any kind of transactions, uh, which it had less efficiency and higher risks in regard of, uh, to safety. But nowadays, people can simply use their phone to do almost any transaction anywhere and anytime. Okay, and for the last one, so going back to the uh, investment aspect of the of financial technology. So prior to the development of uh, FinTech itself, financial instruments that are often used for investing activities are limited to those in higher positions of wealth and status. So uh, through the use of this financial technology, uh, people across all financial backgrounds can access a broader range of investment plans other than only, as said by Omar Amphor, uh, making deposits in the local bank. For example, when uh, back then people couldn't, uh, the people, who could invest in the S&P 500 are only selected people or uh, accredited investors. But nowadays, through the right brokers, even us in Southeast Asia can easily gain access to it. I think that's all from our group, man. Okay, thank you. Next is group uh, it. Okay, uh, maybe I'd like to start uh, presenting as a res representative of group eight and maybe my colleagues can add later. So mm -hmm. currently over 1.7 billion adults across the world remain unbanked and do not have access to formal financial in institutions. And in Indonesia, there are uh, there's around 90 million unbanked people. Um, and based on our findings, FinTech uh, can be bridged to economic and financial inclusion because 69% of the unbanked population own mobile phones that allow them to have access to FinTech services in the form of mobile applications such as uh, P2P lending, e-wallet, financial planner, and many more. So when previously people need to physically go to one of the branches of the bank to create a bank account, which is uh, not widely available in rural areas, now people can gain access to fintech services through KYC measures of verification that can be fully uh, that can be done fully online. So the process of creating the account itself is more streamlined, and furthermore, the lower service costs also helps improve uh, financial inclusion more, since the people who are untouched by financial services are mostly the ones who are of low income background or uh, they live in a more rural area. So the lower service costs itself uh, greatly helps economic inclusion uh, since it is less expensive for people to gain financial services through FinTech. So um, other than that, maybe we'd like to give an illustration in the context of Indonesia. So one of the prominent FinTech that's available uh, is the e-wallet Gopay. And the e-wallet itself uh, is a bridge for the unbanked drivers and merchants to reach a formal financial sector. So GoPay targets the general population as potential customers, especially people who are still untouched by financial services. So by having a GoPay account, project drivers are more likely to get a mortgage as the Central Bank of Indonesia can use the digital wallet transaction record for, of drivers for verification. So in other words, uh, the bank can check financial transaction history of the drivers. And when applying for a loan, the down payment could also be managed through feedback and the amount uh, owed is deducted in installments from the diverse group pay account. In general, SMEs can also benefit from lower service costs and uh, little to no collateral requirements for credit extension. 
And FinTech also typically has better customer experience that allows for more efficient cash, cash management. Yeah, so maybe that is all from group eight, ma'am. Okay. Then the last group is group two. Uh, two, okay. okay. So we're from, and we would like to answer question. So we live in like uh, a world where access to financial services and high speed broadband internet is not universal, affordable. So the, avail the availability of uh, fintech can normalize, regularize, and standardize access to uh, finance. And then uh, with that, we can move closer to achieving economic. So if we look at financial inclusion across the, uh, we can look at it across three dimen dimension based on the World Bank Group or WB. So we have access, usage, and quality of financial services. So FinTech has the potential to lower costs while increasing speed and accessibility, allowing for uh, a more uh, tailored financial services that can scale up. Uh, based on the data that uh, we found uh, from WBG, uh, there's uh, 1.2 billion previously unbanked adults uh, who gain access to financial services and the uh, unbanked population fell by 35 percent over the last decade and it also primarily boosted uh, by the increase in uh, mobile money account and also uh, globally 1.7 billion adults remain unbanked but uh, by the data it fell 35 percent over the last decade. so Beyond, also beyond the mobile money, FinTech uh, also uh, shows promise in areas such as government to person payment and uh, some uh, cross-border remittance. So uh, my friend will like to add. So according to this data from January 21, there were 102.6 million users in Indonesia. The number of internet users in India increased by 7 million, which is a plus of 16% between 2022 and 2021. So uh, the internet penetration in Indonesia stood at number of 73.7% in January 2021. Uh, this is happening due to the rapid development of technology, the country's goal towards digital infrastructure and the improvement of digital services. From this particular factor, uh, the internet penetration, our group is certain that India is heading in the correct direction as the number of internet users in the country rapidly grows year after year. With as we know from the earlier discussion in the topic that several internet providers are pushing one another to reach distant or remote places in Indonesia in providing internet connection to those. So my friend would like to add. From our group recommendation, our findings highlights that FinTech has delivered some promises in reducing uh, the rural rich poor gap, but more work needs to be done to achieve secure and flexible financial services. In this case, the government needs to provide, provide sufficient space to innovation to grow and develop with a light touch and a safe harbor approach. This guide will help to create a positive in impact on the world economy. Thank you. Um, I'd like to add to my friend Farrell's statement. Um, so there are also opportunities for the financial technology to bridge into a society as people are getting adapted to the digital literacy. So uh, modern people's characteristics uh, like activities or anything that are done with easiness, simplicity, time saving, and also flexibility. Uh, there are no such restrictions or limitations on using financial technology, uh, which oblige people to pass certain education levels as long as uh, they're knowledgeable enough, they can use it. Um, so uh, in this also, there's a global pressure and challenges that strongly pushes values for all the aspects of life um, that would be in regards to 
gender, education, equality, social welfare, and etc. Uh, and this relates to the sustainable development goals. So, um, what makes the um, what makes these functions uh, that can bridge e economic inclusion would be uh, the easier access overall for financial services for a lot of people. Uh, uh, it can give access to many needs for daily needs. Uh, that would be in Indonesia, for example, as my friends have previously mentioned before from other groups, uh, such as GoPay, OVO, Credifo, uh, and etc. Uh, these applications or these webs, these e-commerces, and these uh, financial technologies uh, will make it easier for economic inclusion to happen since it provides the people a secure way to store money, uh, transfer money, and many other financial activities. It also has features such as, uh, for example, in uh, GoPay, it has features uh, to, to facilitate uh, things such as uh, Gojek and uh, uh, as sorts. Um, and that's uh, deliveries. So job, job creations in different levels of positions and divisions uh, is created through the, these features. Uh, this could establish their, uh, the income of the people and build productive assets. Um, it is possible to uh, establish the economic um, of the people since the position could be taken in fair time or any time that they want. I think uh, that would be it from you. Thank you. Okay, Pa Riyad, uh, may I give some comment on the all participant uh, presentation? Yep, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First of all, I give appreciation for you all because you already have 30 minutes for my presentation and then 15 minutes to discuss. And then you make also the presentation, present your opinion. Uh, I think it's very interesting for all of the group. I just want to make a short discussion on uh, three uh, questions. For example, for question A, uh, many interesting uh, opinion that you, you also share with all of us in this uh, discussion session. Uh, we actually, we are not, uh, what is this? Uh, we quite optimistic if we look at the India and, and China, uh, the people who have uh, competency in it, digital is also the share of workforce is low, but the, the adoption of uh, digitalization is, is very high. So why this is important for us to make a, a discussion? Because in Indonesia, 57% of the workforce, their education maximum is junior high school. And 39% is maximum is uh, primary school. So they are the, the, the technology user. So don't be worried. You, the people who have the very uh, educated and also skill, so you are the leader. You are the influencer for this. So uh, I think we need to make a more discussion on this. So we, we, we don't need to, to give uh, training, uh, education to 70% of workforce because uh, they cannot easy to, to adopt. Maybe know-how, this, uh, this is important. Uh, many also uh, participants talking about the comprehensive policy. Uh, for for the for the question number A, I think this is this is also important. Next is question B. Question B. This is about the uh, financial inclusion and economic inclusion. All of you in group five, eight, and two have many uh, what is this uh, discussion, mostly in financial inclusion, but how to link with economic inclusion. When they have uh, can get the finance services and then what should they do? For example, why don't we introduce 
to create the ecosystem. So it will be the, the economic activity here. Uh, but many interesting uh, opinion is you already shared uh, here. And then the last is uh, the C, uh, question C. All of you choose almost different uh, different sector who are interested to be discussed. Uh, I think one is, is from Vietnam. They're talking about manufacturing electronic. Yeah, the sector is depend on the, uh, each country have a different structure of an important sector. So for Vietnam, for example, uh, their important sector is export and also manufacturing industry. So that's why uh, during the during the uh, pandemic, the government tried to push the export and also the manufacturing sector that export oriented. Now, for Indonesia, I really want to hear the discussion about how about the agriculture sector, because we many uh, workforce is in this sector. 40%, maybe now it's 38%. And they need the digi uh, to digitalize. Right now, only maybe 1% of uh, farmer who adopt uh, a technology. So I think this is uh, our uh, important sector that we need to discuss. But overall, this is good because only 15 minutes, 15 minutes for the discussion. <laughs> And you can formulate the, the, the problem and also the recommendation for this. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the presentation and also the lecture for, for, for today. Pak Riyad, thank you, Pak Riyad. Okay, thank you very much. Let's give a big applause to Dr. Henry Havarani. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hedi Sapagi, for addressing this link topic. On behalf of IWIC Organizing Committee, we would like to say thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you, Maria. Thank, you, thank, thank you, much. you, everyone. Yep. Hope you will success with your study as well as your career. See you. Thank you very much. Thank you.